So good evening. Uh, Sorry, uh, it's a small technical glitch. So uh, welcome to this Stirata session. So what is the objective of this session? It's very simple. See, uh, this 25th, we are launching a new anthropology batch, the regular anthropology uh, coaching batch. It's going to be a four and a half month batch. So this is the fourth batch I'm doing, a full length anthropology batch. One problem which is very much seen among the beginners uh, is, see, we kind of, it's not that we will ignore teaching basics for you. We very much want to teach basics and we will be teaching basics also. But if you guys have already read your NCRTs once and come here, what I am trying to say is this, the quality of the learning would be much better means that ease of understanding, that comfort, that ability to easily understand deeper topics will be, you know, uh, will be like a, like a cakewalk if you go through NCRTs. But for various reasons, what I've observed is most of the students, you know, they'll get to know what is NCRTs after coming to preparation. Though some of the students know about NCRTs, they would be they would have just read NCRT's class 8, 9, 10. And, but rea in reality, the Indian society NCRT's, uh, those NCRT's we have them in class 11 and class 12. So you, are, you would have read polity, economy, history, geography, and you know, these NCRT's you would have gone through, but majority of the students will not read class 11, class 4 NCRT's. But according to me, if you properly read class 11, class 12 NCRTs, I can confidently say that I've gone through a couple of textbooks of Indian society. None of the textbooks of Indian society, which is currently available in the market, can come anywhere closer to the simplicity and the quality of the discussion that was there in your NCRTs. Don't think I'm glorifying NCRTs, but it's the reality. It's not just me. You can talk to any successful toppers or you can talk to your faculty. All of us are more or less unanimous in this opinion that you have to read NCRTs, especially if you are preparing for an optional subject like anthropology or sociology, you have to read this class 11, class 1 NCRTs. So to make life easy for those who want to join anthropology optional subject, and who also want to master the concepts of Indian society, this particular sthirata, you know, it will be a, a, you will have 10 sessions in this sthirata. Each session will be a one hour session. In this 10 hours, let me tell you prehand itself, I will go very slow because I know most of the students who will be attending this session will be beginners. So that is the reason I'll go very slow. I'll, I'll uh, you know, explain with as many examples as possible in the regular classroom. I may not be, or we may not be discussing so many examples, but here we will try to discuss with as many examples as possible, you know, to make your learning more easy. So I'm telling you before, because you may feel that I'm going slow, but we have to go, we have to take it slow because in the first, in the first learning or in the first understanding, if we make it structured, if we take it in a slow and gradual manner, then it would be easy for you. So I would suggest you, if you guys have already not bought till now, please buy class 11. There are two textbooks and class 12, there is one textbook. And uh, if you guys want me to, uh, I'll also try to post the pictures of that class 11, class 12 NCRT textbooks for you. 
you can buy those textbooks and you can start reading from those textbooks and my lecture also will be based on this textbooks and once again i am trying to remind you our new anthropology batch is about to start from this month 25th for more details you know after this session and also in the youtube description below we are sharing the contact number of our uh, academic coordinators and other people to help you in taking admission to our anthropology course right so on this note and today's session usually uh, uh, just to tell you my sessions usually comprises of uh, many images many images but first session we will not have many images because i just want to introduce you guys to the syllabus so i i i'll i'll introduce you to the syllabus today and from tomorrow it will be more of an image based Sorry, uh, uh, it's raining heavily here. So because of that, you know, we are facing some technical glitches. The internet is uh, kind of on and off. Internet is not consistent. So please uh, excuse us for today. Uh, we are going to fix this by the next session. And yes, right now I'm sharing the screen. Please note. So if you guys see the first chapter in class 11 in CRD, it is this. Social structure, stratification, and social processes in society. Can you see that? Social structure, stratification, and social processes in society. So, what is social structure? Isn't it? On its face, it might seem like a very simple term and very easy to understand term, but many students, you know. Even those students who are writing mains, when we ask them what is social structure, they find it, you know, difficult to tell about it. Simple now. structure. And what is structure? What is function? Let's say this is our body. This is our body, isn't it? So in our body, what is the structure? What is the function? What is the structure? What is the function? Structure is this, right? We have a skeletal system. We have muscular system. Isn't it? We have a nervous system as part of it. We have a brain, we have a spinal cord, we have nerves. Likewise, all these comprises or all these make our structure. And this is structure. But don't you think each component has a function? Each component has a function. Let's say cardiovascular system. Heart has a function. Kidney has a function bones have a function muscles have a function brain have a function just like the human body which has a structure which has a function society also have a structure and society also have a function try to understand very carefully just like human body has a structure just like human body has functions for these structures the society also have a structure and the society and various components of the society also have a function. Hope it's clear. I'll explain with example. Let's say among several things which make up Indian social structure. Let's say now we will try to examine the social structure of India. If somebody asks me what are various components of the social structure of India, the first thing I'll say is this. 
caste system is something which is or which has an important character of being called as a social structure so to indian social structure caste system is very important isn't it let's say is it easy to study india or indian society by taking away caste system imagine it's very difficult right to have an understanding about indian society and how things happen in indian society and how people interact in indian society all these things it becomes very difficult to understand and to analyze without having a knowledge about indian caste system let's say i'll use one more example other component of indian social structure let's say we call it gender inequality gender inequality or we can also put it up in other way patriarchy in the indian society patriarchy is a component of the indian social structure some of you may be thinking what is this patriarchy this is the first time we are hearing this term patriarchy it's okay most of us learn term after term term after term eventually patriarchy means nothing but a society in which authority is held in the hands of men such a society is called as a patriarchal society so indian society is a patriarchal society indian society is a patriarchal society now try to think if somebody ask you let's say you are a foreigner and you have visited india and to study india is it possible for us to get a good grasp of indian society if we are not aware of this fact that in india patriarchy is a very important component yes it becomes very difficult for us to understand and analyze india if we do not if we do not or if you do not have a proper knowledge about so called idea of patriarchy so here after these two examples which are somewhat basic in their nature i will go little deeper and i will introduce a word a new term for you about which you should be very very clear about in tomorrow session i'll also try to show you the images as i've already told you uh, my sessions will comprise of lots of images uh just to show you uh, how different images we use in the class two discussions let's say uh, randomly okay we'll see chapter 1.5 what is that chapter 1.5 is primates in our syllabus for beginners if you can go through that chapter you will see that chapter 1.5 is primates so what we do generally we kind of bring in lots of images into our classroom discussion so this is how we will try to explain the content through images so it will be easy for you to remember and replicate let's take one more chapter uh one topic which students often find it very difficult this chapter 1.8 chapter 1.8 uh, archaeological anthropology is what we call it right chapter 1.8 yeah archaeological anthropology so even here this topic which students find it very difficult struggling and like this so not just to topics like this where there is a lot of scope for images even those topics where you know it's little difficult to find scope for images we somehow do our effort and we try to bring those images into classes let's say <laughs> there is a topic called as tribe nation state tribe nation state Uh, this is one topic in most of the institutions they not even teach this topic but even for such topics like tribe nation state what we try to do we'll try to bring necessary images in necessary flow charts necessary diagrams to make your understanding much more comprehensive and interesting so that is the reason i just want to give you an assurance that from tomorrow session uh, that uh, sessions would include more number of Im images to give you much more conceptual clarity so going back to learning anthropology through ncrts the term which i said i will introduce you guys now is social institutions social institutions so what are the social institutions social institutions to start with 
comprises or forms a very important component of the social structure first i will tell you the example here i am i don't want to give you definitions and you know all those things because it might feel you know uh, like if i start talking about definitions it will become a regular classroom the purpose is not that the purpose is to familiarize you with these terms with examples so that you will have that comfort in understanding in regular classroom discussions we will start talking about definition this is the definition of social structure this is the definition of social institution this is the definition of social stratification we will do it later now try to understand social institution let's say marriage is an example of a social institution family is an example of a social institution religion is an example of a social institution or even the pol political organizations they are an example of a social institution even economic organizations they are an example of a social institution kinship means relationship we form with others especially our blood relatives or relatives which we get through marriage links these are also example of a social institutions i know i have given too many examples for you to remember don't worry one after one i'll come to you first first i want to start with religion as a social institution so what is this religion as a social institution simple ma'am see in indian society we all know what an important role religion plays think here uh, are we confining religion only to praying of god are we confining religion only to praying of god no we are not confining religion only to praying of god religion kind of determines every single aspect of our life think carefully isn't it including the date on which your batch is going to launch is also uh, what we consider good muhurtam so good day auspicious time because we want students to excel it's not that you know uh, once you get into anthropology you will realize that all these things does not have any meaning that's a different that discussion but in india religion plays a very important role in life religion determines whom you will marry whom you will not marry religion determines how many children we will have isn't it religion determines what food you will eat and what food you will not eat religion determine which whom you will interact with whom you will not interact religion also can determine what professions you are supposed to take what professions you are not supposed to take isn't it i think when i am saying this certain things might be running actually in the background back of your mind isn't it so religion is a very important social institution my religion determines many things in fact religion determines the entire way in which an individual thinks in a society isn't it how an individual think how an individual act and how an individual is supposed to act or behave especially in countries like india is largely determined by religion did you see how powerful this social institution called as religion is in fact if not now if 50 years ago or to be more precise a 100 years ago if you remove religion out of indian society you can't understand indian society if somebody want to understand indian society first they have to understand religion in india if they don't understand religion in india that is hinduism they can never understand or they can never interpret indian society with clarity and confidence such integral component to the indian society is this phenomenon called as religion hope things are slowly getting into your mind religion is a classical example of a social institution and the social institution in turn is an integral component to the indian social structure okay another important social institution family marriage of course we will deal both separately marriage marriage is a social institution right what is this marriage as a social institution do you know any societies anywhere in the world which does not have an institution of marriage at least in the present society we do not know in the present times we do not know any society in which there is no marriage every human human society has marriage very amusing right or do you know any animals getting married i'm sure you guys will not be aware that there are no animals at least in the documented history now which got married only humans are getting married why are we even getting married 
what are the advantages of getting married yes marriage has many advantages marriage has many functions next question that must be running in your mind what functions this marriage has yes marriage has functions marriage has sexual function isn't it marriage helps to satisfy an individual sexual drive very important marriage has a biological function reproductive function which means just like every individual has an urge a sexual urge or a sexual drive similarly an individual will have urge to give birth to a child especially this is high in the case of women every woman at certain age she will experience this urge to have a baby it's a biological thing just like every individual will have a sexual drive individual will also have that urge to give birth to a child just like that a man also will have urge to father means he would want to become a father so what i am essentially trying to say is this marriage is helping in realizing this sexual function and biological function marriage has a social function yes in india very much why are people even killing today in the name of caste let's say a high caste girl if she marries a low caste boy we are seeing honor killings even today there are plethora of movies also on this concept right why this is happening because something called as marriage also has a social function social function means the family to whom you are getting married to can determine or will determine your social status so that is one reason marriage has a social function marriage has a biological function marriage has a reproductive function marriage has a psychological function what is the psychological function yes see everybody at some point of time we have this urge to have someone to us someone who will be with us all the time someone who will pay attention to us all the time someone who is there to give us that necessary psychological support that shock absorber we all want maybe you are not in that age you need this but at after at certain age you also would want somebody to you somebody for you all the time so marriage plays that role of psychological function so that psychological being psychological goodness that yes i have someone for me all the time i have someone for me whole the time so that is another important thing psychological function of the marriage marriage also has a care function isn't it marriage has a care function isn't it wife and husband care for each other wife and husband care for each other and a natural extension to marriage is family once an individual get married he will start a family here in anthropology we will not just believe like that if somebody tells that is it guaranteed that everyone who is getting married should start a family yes we have exceptions there are some societies which got married but they will not start their family immediately they'll take time to start their family and there are some societies in which there is no family there is marriage but there is no family people get married but people don't start a family some of you might be thinking is it really possible is it really practical that somebody is getting married and they don't have a family we can't even imagine right because we belong to mainstream society for us it's like this people say we i started i got married and started my family but there are societies in which people marry with marry and after marry they don't start a family girl stays with her parents girl stays with her you know maternal uncle something like this there are exceptions which i'll be discussing in regular classes there are exceptions but yes in majority of the societies we have family we have family family also perform more or less all the functions marriage is marriage is doing family also has a social function isn't it people say i belong to this family i belong to that family i belong to nandamuri family all these things what people say because family has a social function family also has a care function isn't it people in the family take care of us family also has a psychological function people in the family will give us that necessary shock absorbing support let's say you are writing a competitive examination for some reason you fail in the examination who is the first people whom we will fall fall back option it is nothing but our parents right so family has all these functions in the society so the reason why i am discussing all these things social institutions exist and social institutions are an integral component or a component of the social structure and these different social institutions like marriage family religion and kinship kinship means relatives and relationship with each other 
they not only exist they not only exist observe very carefully what i am trying to say they also interact with each other they not only exist but they also interact with each other they interact with each other i know here some of you may be getting confused what is this different social institutions interacting with each other yes they'll interact with each other ma why not just like that i told right don't you think the religion to which you can determine the, the religion to which you belong can determine your marriage definitely the religion to which you belong can determine your uh, you know family status very much like this different social institutions also interact with each other that is the point i am trying to say so with this brief discussion i told you what is a social structure and examples of social structure like caste system patriarchy marriage family religion kinship political organization economic organization all these are various examples of social institutions which are a part of the social structure and the social institutions interact with each other interact with each other uh, and they try to become part of the social structure and some things which i am teaching here they may not be technically 100% correct because you are very much beginners if i start using high sounding terms and explain you in a technically correct manner also so there is a possibility that there will be some uh, incompleteness in your understanding so first of all you have to develop interest for the subject and you have to develop connect to the subject so i have taken that little bit of liberty and i'm for and also i have taken certain examples they may not be 100% accurate technically but my first priority is to generate that interest for the subject to you and make you glued to this particular you know thing called as society and that is how your understanding of or your liking to anthropology of the subject should grow so after this another important thing they have mentioned in ncert textbooks is social stratification so what is this social stratification the term itself seems little horrific what is this stratification strata strata means what this is an english term right okay maybe in your school level you would have come across this term strata strata means layers strata strata means layers what is this layers and how and why are we discussing layers in the context of society even in the society we have these layers ma very simple i am sure all of you would have observed this all people in the society are they treated equally no let's take in our own indian society upper caste people the way they enjoy is something else backward caste or the middle castes their social status is something else and dalits tribals and the kind of marginalization or the kind of oppression they are victims of is something else isn't it what is this this is nothing but social stratification ma in societies not just in indian societies world over in all the societies there is some or other form of stratification to put it in even more simpler way people are arranged with people are arranged in such a way people are arranged in such a way or groups are arranged in such a way that they are placed in a superior inferior relationship to each other some of you may be thinking what is this superior inferior relationship to each other very simple na some groups are placed in a superior position some groups are placed in a inferior position and people are always told that these people are inferior those people are superior and the superior people will dominate inferior people all these are examples of stratification don't think that when i am saying stratification caste system is the only example which exists why not upper class middle class lower class what is this this is also a kind of stratification isn't it people with lot of money lot of social contacts lot of political power upper class people with not much money not much social prestige not much political power they are middle class people who do not have any sort of political power people who do not have any sort of economic prowess people who do not have any sort of social status they will be placed under lower class this is and one type of arrangement layer upper class middle class and lower class in regular classrooms we will also discuss what is the difference between caste system and class system but the present discussion we don't need that then one more kind of stratification is there if you guys have observed 
in newspapers tomorrow when you are reading your hindu paper you will suddenly come across this term gender based stratification don't get panicked gender based stratification means again we will go back to fundamentals gender based stratification males females are arranged in a superior inferior relationship to each other in indian society yes very much males and females are arranged in a superior inferior relationship to each other in indian society that is nothing but gender stratification so i'm sure with this your understanding of the term stratification should be complete then just now i i use this term suddenly in hindu paper a term will come gender stratification and you will fear that i have not read it i have not come across it anyway simple if you have read your ncert is then you will easily understand such terms then one more term which often appears in your newspapers especially beginners they'll get panic whenever they come across these kind of terms structural inequalities then we would think what is this structural inequalities we have never read this then our imagination also will not give us a proper answer simple ma what did i tell you as components of social structure i said caste system isn't it i said patriarchy i said religion all these are part of social structure right structural inequalities means don't you think excuse me there are inequalities in india on the basis of caste system yes very much we have inequalities in india on the basis of caste system don't you think there are inequalities in india on the basis of gender very much we have inequalities in india on the basis of gender so gender based inequalities or caste based inequalities all these are a type of you know what what are this they are a form of structural inequalities means these are the inequalities in the indian social structure what are these these are inequalities in the indian social structure let's say uh, as you go little deeper and you start taking your newspaper reading more seriously and you start analyzing uh, you know concepts in the newspaper some of you you know uh, like let's say you will come across a term term like so in a in a concept like how do you address you know uh, the problem of gender based violence violence against women is growing in indian society how should we address this gender based violence in indian society generally most of the students as you go into your answer writing you know what you do you will start writing we will implement strict laws we will come up with you know uh, a we will use technology we will establish new institutions we will strengthen our police force people like write these kind of points but many people often ignore the social dimension or society aspect of it some of you may be thinking what is the social dimension or what is the society aspect of it simple in india crimes against women exist because there are structural inequalities in indian society what is the structural inequality in indian society the structural inequality in indian society is nothing but gender based inequality this patriarchal attitude this belief that men are superior when compared to women is itself the biggest reason for the gender based violence that could be sexual violence that could be physical violence that could be mental violence all the forms of violence that are being trusted upon or that are women becoming victim of or because of this structural inequality it's a design it's a design of the indian society we are often told that our fathers are superior to mothers that is how you know most of the people are brought up isn't it so yes that is so you come across these kind of terms like structural inequalities so don't feel uncomfortable that is where if your fundamentals are strong then you will not find it difficult at all to understand concepts like this so we have hope you, you have, hope you have understood what is a social structure and you also have understood what is social stratification which is nothing but arrangement of people in layers which is again nothing but arrangement of people in superior inferior relationship to each other and i have also given examples for you explaining the idea of social stratification then what is this social processes social processes social processes in society social processes is nothing but this is again a very important component in our anthropology let's say the the term social structure will appear to us in many chapters in many chapters we will come across this term social structure let's say your understanding of a very important topic called as anthropological thought 
your understanding of topics like marriage family kinship all these things an important component of the anthropology you they'll be better if you know what is social structure and social stratification is a completely separate topic in our indian society sorry in our anthropology there is one dedicated topic social stratification and if you understand this social stratification better many of the topics in anthropology will become easy for us then social processes though this term social processes do not appear directly in anthropology syllabus or in anthropology textbooks but having a knowledge on social process will help us so some of you may be thinking what is this social processes social processes are nothing but the way these interactions are happening i told right different social institutions interact with each other just now i told in today's session itself then how these interactions are what is the nature of these interactions oh, i i'll make it clear how these interactions are happening and what is the nature of these interactions is what we will try to study in the social processes uh, i know still it will be unclear simple ma social process can be characterized by accommodation social process can be characterized by cooperation social process can be characterized by conflict social process can be uh, characterized by collaboration i just gave simple four example what is this accommodation collaboration cooperation conflict simple let's say there are two religions religion a religion b this religion a and religion b how or what all possibilities exist between their two interaction they may be very cooperative with each other they may be cooperating with each other and they may are one more possibility they may be accommodative to each other accommodative means religion a knows that religion b is different from it religion b knows religion a is different from it and both of them know that there are certain cultural traits or there are certain things in both of them which may have problem to each other which may cause problem to each other but still both of them respect each other okay we will accommodate there are some things which other religions doing according uh, because of which we will have some discomfort okay we will take the discomfort what's wrong like that that approach is called as an accommodation approach or accommodative approach it can be accommodation it can be cooperation it can be conflict isn't it two religions they might be busy fighting with each other all the time two religions might be busy fighting with each other isn't it we are seeing communal conflicts means people fighting with each other in the name of religion are we not seeing it yes it can be accommodation it can be conflict it can be cooperation it can be collaboration also means they may not just cooperate one level higher they may collaborate okay you may belong to different religion i may belong to different religion let us collaborate and let us try to build a peaceful harmonious wealthy society let us collaborate with each other just like that this social processes are nothing but how different social institutions are interacting with each other it can be how two different castes are interacting with each other it can be how two different religions can be interacting with each other it can also be how two different families be interacting with each other everything will fall under that domain of social processes so it's very important to understand this term social process because see social structure as part of the social structure we have different social institutions and the different social institutions are interacting with each other and how they are interacting with each other is nothing but this idea of social processes that interaction is characterized by or that interaction can be one of conflict one of cooperation one of collaboration one of accommodation it can be of different types it can be of different types so today this is the first chapter for you one social structure two social stratification three social processes now what you guys will do you read this chapter social structure social stratification and social processes you go through different examples ncert has given wonderful examples for all these topics if you can see here here it has given in rural areas the general tendency is people belonging to different caste live in different streets did you understand this people belonging to different castes 
live in different streets let's say somebody dalit lower caste he might be living in the periphery of the village whereas somebody who is rich a landlord he will be living in the center of the village but what about in city no upper caste no lower caste all of them will reside at the same place did you see how something called as a caste what is the link between caste and housing why is caste determining where people live why is caste determining people live because caste is a very important component of the social structure caste is a very important component of the social structure and caste is determining social processes in this case what is the social processes what is the interaction first of all it is a superior inferior relationship so if we try to understand in the context of social stratification these are placed in a superior position these are placed in an inferior position and what is the social process what is the nature of interaction interaction is one characterized by conflict means if this guy if he will try to build a house next to him immediately he will go and attack him so it is characterized by conflict social processes in a rural area is characterized by conflict isn't it such a wonderful image ncert has given whereas such a scenario you will not experience in case of a urban areas and also see this activity try to do the activity often we neglect the activities given in ncerts but don't do it might very thought provoking and it will stimulate your thinking actually it will be very helpful also so again one more activity try to do that activity try to do that activity also then look at this wonderful and simple activity think of examples of cooperation how different religions are cooperating with each other how different religions are competing with each other how different religions are conflict in can have conflict with each other try to think of example how different castes are cooperating with each other how different castes are competing with each other how different castes have entered into conflict with each other think of examples and write them all in one book and your maturity of this topic of social processes will further get enhanced look all these are different types of processes can you see here what is happening here this process people protesting against the government so this is what is this it's a conflict so people are in conflict with the state people are in conflict with the state people are believing that state is behaving in a superior manner people is state is behaving in a superior manner and taking decisions on its own without involving people so it is characterized by conflict isn't it then but here what is happening people are cooperating with each other like a team people are cooperating with each other like a team and it can also be understood as a competition in a game people are competing with each other competing with each other so all these are different examples to explain the concept of social processes so do do this activity also discuss whether women are cooperating or refusing to engage in conflict or competition because of a range of normative compulsions are they cooperating with the given norm of male inheritance because of the fear of losing the affection of their brothers if they behave otherwise the song in the box below is specific to a region but evokes the more general fears of natal abandonment for women in a patriarchal society such a wonderful idea look at the depth of it in indian society women generally do not compete with their brothers they think that let's say if i compete with my brother for my father's property they believe that they will lose the affection of the family and they don't compete with their brother for the family property and they believe that why should i enter into conflict with my brother he is my brother let him enjoy all the property she may be enjoying all the poverty but she will be having that sacrificing tendency that let my brother enjoy all the property why should i compete with my brother for the money why should i inherit my family property and if i try to demand for my property then i will enter into conflict with my family then there is a possibility that my family may abandon me my family may not take care of me then where am i supposed to go if my husband leaves me look how many insecurities a woman is facing in the indian society isn't it so all these kind of insecurities are a classical example of the social stratification which is nothing but the gender stratification 
and an important component called as patriarchy which is a part of indian social structure and the processes and the social processes is characterized by conflict or competition lack of conflict or lack of competition among women so hope you are understanding ma look at this bride leaving for a groom's house in a doli this is what happens in indian society right yes so do this activity 6 also it is you know it's very interesting it is something related to reservation system so once you read this you will understand so activity 8 and 9 uh, activity 7 we can do it in classroom uh, regular classroom here they have just explained what is conflict and what is cooperation for you the same thing i have told they also have told you so wonderful example this is read about it land conflicts land conflicts it's a kind of social processes happens between whom if you see here a rajput a dominant caste and a patel a dominant caste and usually as they are powerful people they'll try to take for granted a dalit and they use their power they use their advantage in the social strata because they are superiorly placed in the social strata they'll misuse this and they even the dalit cannot come into conflict with them and dalit have to often forego their land but if the same if the same conflict happens between two dominant caste people then it might take a different turn it might even take a turn of a violence that is not part of our discussion so with the basics i have given to you it's very easy now to read this topic and generate interest in this topic and also go through go, go through this uh, glossary some terms like mechanical solidarity and organic solidarity you may not be in a position to understand no don't worry those things will be covered and those things will be taken as part of the classroom discussion but what i suggest you guys after this basic understanding of introducing you to the idea of social structure social stratification and social process with the examples i have given don't think that it will take much time for you read this chapter as i have already explained it to you it will not take much time for you to do this also try to answer these questions i know you guys are beginners it might be a little difficult for you to understand but still don't give up whatever little you write try to write answers for these topics also so with this i want to stop today's session tomorrow session it will be technically much more superior today because of you know some weather issues we could not give good quality class technically and i have already told uh, the admissions for this anthropology batch has started and from 25th the new batch is going to start so those students who want to enroll i'll give those uh, description in the youtube link below so you can contact our uh, academic coordinator and they'll guide you in the process of admission thank you so much